Michelle Maher, and I'm the coordinator for plug-in at um, the Robbins Library series targeted to 50 plus adults. Um, we do monthly programming from now that we're kind of past the pandemic, uh, doing back to monthly programming. We were doing every three weeks during the pandemic, uh, but now we're back to monthly programming from September through June. Um, we offer programs, um, so the programs are run the gamut. Um, we're, we'll be showing a film uh, before the end of the year about how uh, Midwestern state is dealing with, the, with climate change. A farm is successfully um, dealing with, the, with all of that, and I felt it was especially timely given what this country is going through with the drought. Um, we'll also, if you are interested in learning about programs, you can find out about it in a number of ways. You can sign up for the Robbins Library general email list, and then you'll find out about all of the programs that the library offers. If you would like to only learn about plug-in events, there is a plug-in mailing list. If you go to the Robbins Library's front page, scroll down to the bottom, you can sign up for the plug-in at the Robbins. And I send out usually two emails a month, one to let you know what the program is going to be, and then one closer to the event as a reminder. And um, the only one who uses that email list is me. Um, if you, so if you want to get the general Robbins Library email list, you need to sign up for that. And we also have someone here from the Friends, and the Friends has a mailing list too. And um, so you can, you can find a whole host of um, email lists there. But all of both the Friends events and the plug-in events are in the general library um, email that goes out once a month. Um, so if you want to, if you just fill out one of these forms for me and leave it on the table, I will add you, to, this is your permission for me to add you to the list. Um, I would like to introduce Ben Thornton. We've been doing, uh, this is our 11th season uh, of Plug-In and our palindrome year. And uh, Ben has been um, presenting every other year, and we took a little break during the pandemic, um, to talk about Medicare. He is a licensed insurance broker and he also is a financial consultant. His company is called Unicorn Consulting. and. Um, Ben will tell you that every year when he does this, his, it, he updates this, and it has to pass, it has to be vetted by the federal government. Um, so everything that Ben is telling you has been vetted by Medicare. Um, and this program is not only for those of you who are about to become eligible for Medicare, it's also for those of you who are of that age who are enrolled in Medicare because every year there's an open enrollment program. Um, period, which started on October 15th and goes till the end of the year, correct? December 7th. December 7th, sorry. And you get to choose every year if you want to stay with the Medicare plan that you have or if you want to go to Medicare Advantage. And Ben will explain all of that to you. So without further ado, Ben. Thank you, Michelle. It's always great to be here. Um, so as um, she was saying, my name is Ben Thornton. Um, I've been uh, um, in, Medicare broker for 10 years now. Um, been doing this program for eight years um, and it's always been a great program. Um, I'm going to be going over a little bit of the history of Medicare and then talk about the different parts and finally go over the specifics for the coming year. After that there will be time for questions. Um, I do want you to hold questions till the end though because there might be something later on that uh, answers your question before you get to it. Um, so um, I am living in air and working out um, from home for this. Um, I moved out there in 2017. Before that, I actually lived in the Colonial Village condos. Um, I'm a registered investment advisor, licensed in Massachusetts, um, health and life insurance licensed in several states, um, Series 65 licensed, and I've been helping people with Medicare since 2006. Um, so this is my sixth. 17th season of helping people. Um, so Medicare um, started July 30th, 1965, when President Johnson signed into law the bill that created Parts A and Part B. Um, in the 1980s, Medicare supplement plans, which are also known as Medigap plans, were introduced. Um, those to help cover the expenses that Part A and Part B do not cover. Um, in the 90s, 
those supplements were standardized. Before that, play, uh, com insurance companies could do whatever they wanted with the plans. In the 90s, um, the government standardized the plans. That's where you're going to get the plan A, plan B, plan C um, that people talk about. Um, or in Massachusetts, it's slightly different, which I'll get to in just a second. In 1997, Medicare Part C, which is Medicare Advantage plans, were introduced. And finally, in 2006, Medicare Part D was introduced, which finally gave people access to prescription drug plans without um, being in a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, for, to qualify for Medicare Part A and B, um, you are automatically qualified if, you're, if you are a U.S. citizen, age 65, have lived in the U.S. for five years, and have 40 Medicare credits. Um, you also automatically qualify if you have end-stage renal disease. Um, if you have been collecting Social Security disability insurance for 24 months, um, so that's SSDI, not SSI. Um, so there is a slight difference between those two, so only one of those actually qualifies for it. Um, or if you are disabled due to Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, if you don't qualify automatically, you can still um, sign in um, if you pay a monthly premium for your Part A insurance. Coverage um, will begin, in most cases, the first day of the month that you turn 65. Um, the exception to that is if your birthday is on the first day of the month, it actually starts on the first day of the month before your birthday. So if you're bo born on April 1st, coverage starts on March 1st of that year. Um, so, for Medicare Part A, Medicare Part A is hospital coverage, um, that's any inpatient care. Um, these numbers are accurate for 2023, um, so at the beginning of a hospital stay, if you're in the hospital for 60 days, you're responsible for the first $1,600 of um, expenses for the hospital stay. Um, and then the Medicare Part A will cover the rest. Um, so the um, Part A um, a benefit period starts when you enter the hospital um, as, an in, as being admitted as an inpatient, and it ends when you have not received inpatient hospital care or skilled care as a skilled nursing facility for 60 days in a row. Um, so if you go into the hospital, then come out and you go see your doctor and the doctor's like, nope, you need back in the hospital. That still counts as one stay. Um, if you go home though, um, or get better, have to go in for another reason, that's a new benefit period so that deductible starts over. Um, after 60 days in the hospital, um, you're responsible for $400 per day from day 61 to 90. Um, and then you're responsible for 800 days after day 90 um, if you're in, and the after day 90, there's 60 days total. So if you're in the hospital 95 days, that takes five days off of your lifetime. That does not replenish. The rest of this does. So if you're in the hospital then for another 100 days, you'd use up another 10 days of the reserve period, but the first 90 days would still be covered um, as before. Medicare Part A also covers 190 days of inpatient psychiatric care. Um, that does not replenish, so that's 190 days for, um, over the lifetime. There are other benefits per Part A. Um, in Part A, they um, cover the um, blood transfusions. Um, you're responsible for the ch charge for the first three pints. After that, Medicare Part A pays for it. Um, they cover home health care. They cover skilled nursing facility. Um, for the first 20 days, you're responsible for the cost. Medicare Part A does not pay for it. From days 21 to 100, you pay $200 per day. The insurance covers the rest. After 100 days, um, then, um, I'm sorry, I, they cover, they cover the costs um, for the first 20 days. You're responsible for $200 a day from days 21 to 100, and then you're responsible for all costs after day 100. Um, Sorry, I got that confused for a second, but they cover everything for the first 20 days. Um, Medicare Part A will cover the first 20 days of skilled nursing facility. From days 21 to 100, 
Um, you pay $200 per day and they pay the rest. And then after 100 days, you're responsible for the payments. Um, they also cover hospice care. Um, Medicare Part B covers outpatient care. That's your doctor's visits. That's the, um, um, any labs that you have, any outpatient, outpatient procedures, x-rays, MRIs. Um, and that Medicare Part B is not covered completely, or you have to pay, sorry. Medicare Part B, you have to pay $164 per month for individuals making up to $85,000 per year. Um, Medicare Part A, it, you don't have a premium at all. This is the premium for Part B. If you don't enroll in Medicare Part B when you first are eligible for it, um, then you get penalized 10% for every 12 months you are eligible but don't sign up. Um, this does not imply, or this, this does not apply if you have group coverage through an employer. So if you're getting coverage from an employer because you're still working and you're 68, 69, you don't have to worry about that late enrollment penalty. It's only if you're not getting creditable coverage um, through an employer. However, COBRA coverage does not count, does not weigh the penalty. So if you leave work and sign up for COBRA, that penalty will start to apply for it. Um, so if you're not working, don't go on COBRA, and you're qualified for Medicare, don't go on COBRA, you'd want to sign up for Medicare Part B instead. Um, in 2023, Medicare Part B has a $226 deductible. So you're responsible for the first $226 for the year for office visits, labs, etc. Then you're responsible for 20% of any costs after that. That's per year, that's not per benefit period. That's the difference between Part A and Part B. Um, Part B benefits include office visits, labs, x-rays, diagnostic imaging, like CAT scans, um, some preventative care, um, so preventative um, colonoscopy, mammograms um, are covered at no charge. Um, annual wellness visit, so that's once a year. Um, go to, you'll go to the doctor's office, they'll check to see how you're doing, make sure that everything's up to date. That's um, covered completely. Um, outpatient surgery is covered under Part B. Chemotherapy is covered under Part B. Um, durable medical equipment, so diabetic supplies, um, um, hospital beds, um, anything that you would get at a durable medical supply store um, is covered. Some medications are covered through Part B. Um, Part B also covers ambulance and it covers some additional benefits, um, but those are not as commonly used. What's not covered? Most dental care is not covered. Um, dental care that's caused by um, an infection or something else that's medical is covered, but routine dental care is not. Routine eye exams are not covered by Part B. Dentures, cosmetic surgery, acupuncture, hearing aids, um, long-term care, and most medications are not covered by Medicare Part B. So as I was saying, should you enroll in Medicare um, as soon as possible? If you qualify for Medicare Part A with no premium, meaning that you have the 40 quarters of work that you've, um, been, in the, that you've been a citizen for five years, or that you have one of the other conditions, you should enroll as soon as you're eligible. Um, there's no charge to you for it, and it and it's, will work with your um, employer coverage. If you have insurance through a creditable employer plan, you may wish to postpone Part B, um, and you may want to postpone Part A if you have to pay a premium for it, because sometimes um, the benefits from your employer will be better and so there's no reason to pay the extra premium. Again, each situation is different, so you would want to look into it to see 
whether the coverage is creditable um, and whether or not the Medicare would be of assistance to you. To apply for Medicare A and B. If you're collecting Social Security or railroad retiree benefits, you will automatically be signed up for Medicare A and B when you turn 65. Um, if you are disabled, you will automatically be signed up for Medicare A and B 25 months after SSDI begins. So 24 months of disability, you qualify for it the 25th month, it starts automatically. If you are not collecting Social Security benefits, you will not be automatically enrolled. Um, you will have a seven month open enrollment period beginning three months before your 65th birthday, the month of your 65th birthday, and three months after the month of your 65th birthday to sign up with no penalty. After that is when that Part B penalty starts to um, kick in. If you don't enroll at that time, um, you can sign up for Medicare Part A with no premium. You can sign up any time. Um, there's, you can, you'll just contact Social Security, um, let them know that you want to sign up for it, and you'll be able to sign up for it for the next month. Um, you may sign up for Medicare Part B and Part A if you need to pay a premium between January 1st and March 31st of each year. Coverage for those would begin July 1st of that year. If you are working um, and you're receiving insurance benefits through your employer, you can apply for Medicare Part A and B at any time while you're still working and for up to eight months after the employment or the coverage ends um, without a penalty. So when you're thinking of retiring, you can start looking into the plan and you still have eight months after um, you lose that employer coverage to sign up without any penalty. If you sign up for COBRA, that doesn't count the penalty will still apply. How to sign up. Um, applications go through the Social Security office. Um, you can go online to ssa.gov. You can also apply by phone, or you can apply at the local office. Um, for Arlington, that's 10 Fawcett Street in Cambridge. Um, so, as I said, when you, when you turn 65, if you're collecting Social Security or, or railroad retirement benefits, you will automatically be signed up for Part A and Part B. Sometimes you don't want Part B because even though you're getting Social Security benefits, you're still working and you're still getting an employer through a spouse or something like that. Then, if you do not want it, you can sign the back of the Medicare card that they give you, mail it back to the address provided, and they will send you a new card with just the Part A coverage so you don't have to pay for the Part B premium if you don't need it. If you are collecting Part A and you want to add on Part B later, you cannot do it through the website currently. Um, the best way of doing it is to call Social Security office or to go to the office. Um, for that, in general, the Social Security offices are always busy at the beginning of the month, so I always recommend going after the 10th of the month or setting up an appointment um, because they're just a little bit less busy um, a little bit later in the month. So Medicare Part A and Part B are very good. They have all those coverages. There are a few limitations to the plan, however. Um, the first major limitation is there's no out-of-pocket maximum. So if you have $100,000 in um, procedures and things, you're responsible for 20,000, 20% 20 of it. Um, there's no maximum. It, the amount just keeps going up. You pay, they pay 80%, you pay 20%. It also does not cover prescriptions. There are two ways to handle those issues. First is a Medicare Supplement and Prescription Drug Plan, or a Medigap Plan and Prescription Drugs, um, which is Part D, or Medicare Advantage Plan, which is Part C. Both work for different... Um, situations, um, which one is best for you is, some, is what we're going to be getting into now. Medicare supplements um, are offered by third-party companies. They're not offered by Medicare, um, and prices vary by the different companies. Um, in Massachusetts, um, earlier I said that in the 90s, the government st standardized all of the 
um, supplement plans and you have the letter plans, the part A or the plan A, plan B, plan F, plan G. Three states, Massachusetts, Minnesota, and Wisconsin, um, standardized their coverage before the government standardized it. We get to keep our standardized plans that we had before that. So our plans are not going to be a plan F or a plan G or a plan N, um, like you'll hear from any of your friends in other states. Um, we have three different plans right now. Um, and that, that's going to be on the next slide. Um, the Medicare supplements, um, to qualify for it, you must have Medicare A and B. Um, it is secondary to A and B. So when you go to your doctor's office, you'll be giving them your Medicare card and your supplement card. They'll bill the Medicare first. Medicare will pay their portion. The bill will go automatically to your supplement. They'll pay their portion. And then um, the doctor's office will send you the re bill for the remainder. Um, it covers some or all of the costs left over after Medicare pays. In 2020, there was a big change um, nationwide with Medicare um, supplements. Um, as part of the Affordable Care Act, um, anyone who became eligible for Medicare after January 1st, 2020, um, cannot choose a plan that has first dollar coverage. Before that, there were plans, um, Plan F in Massachusetts, that was Supplement 1, um, that covered everything um, from your Part B deductible on. So that first $226, they covered everything. So you had no out-of-pocket cost for anything that was covered by Medicare A or B. If you qualify, if you become eligible for Medicare after January 1st, 2020, they no longer allow that. The best you can get is a plan that has that $226 deductible for Part B. Everything else is covered. So in Massachusetts, there are currently two options available. These were the standardized options before. Um, and the first one is the core plan. It covers everything that Part A and Part B leaves over, except the deductibles. So it doesn't cover that $1,600 deductible per hospital stay. Um, and it doesn't cover the $226 Part B premium. But it covers the 80, it covers the 20% after the Part B premium. It covers days 60 and on for um, Part A. Um, supplement one covers everything. That was the one before 2020. If you were eligible for Medicare before 2020, it covers um, all the deductibles. So it covers that 1600 and that 226. Supplement 1A is what Massachusetts came up with as the option instead of Supplement 1, um, which covers everything still from Part A. It just doesn't cover that $226. So in Massachusetts, there are a variety of plans, as I said, from different companies. Um, they, the Supplement Core plans range from $114 to $205 per month. Some of the more expensive ones have some additional benefits besides just the basic benefits. Um, it does not cover um, the Part A deductible. It doesn't cover the Part B deductible. Um, and it does not ch cover the skilled nursing facility charges from days 20 to 100. Um, it does add an additional 60 days of inpatient psychiatric hospitalization. So instead of 190 days per lifetime, it's 250 days per lifetime. Supplement 1 in 2023 is going to be between $207 and $331 per month. Um, these prices are on top of your Part B premium, that $160 premium for Part B. Um, it covers all the Part A and B deductibles and the skilled nursing facility fees. It covers 80% of emergency medical expenses during foreign travel within the first 90 days of travel. Um, some of the core plans also have that benefit, but that's not one that they're required to have. And it includes an additional 120 days for inpatient psychiatric health. Supplement 1A is between 185 and 322 per month, depending on the plan. Um, and that one is going to be the same as part um, supplement 1. And that covers everything the core covers, covers the Part A and the skilled nursing facility, the emergency medical expenses, the 120, 120 additional days. It does not cover the $226 for 
for Part B premium, for Part B deductible. So when do you when do you sign up for a supplement? In Massachusetts, you can sign up for a supplement anytime starting two months before your Medicare Part A and B become effective. Um, it will become effective on the same date as your Medicare Part B effective date or the first of the month after you sign up. Um, so this, there is no open enrollment period. This you can sign up for any time during the year. Um, there's no penalty for signing up late. You can sign up any time. You could sign up when you're 75 just and you decide you want a supplement, you can sign up for it at that time. Um, this is in Massachusetts and other states there are um, restrictions to this. Um, some other states require underwriting to sign up for a supplement plan. Massachusetts does not have a underwriting for supplements. Um, they do have an incentive for you to sign up when you first become an, uh, um, eligible though. Um, up to they reduce your price by up to 15% um, for the first um, three years, um, if, depending on the plan. Um, if you sign up when you first become eligible. Um, that's how they encourage people to sign up early, is by giving you that reduced premium for the first few years that you're on the plan. But even with the supplements, you're not being covered for your prescriptions. So that's where the prescription D plan came in originally. Um, in Massachusetts, in Arlington in 2023, it, it, separated by county, so different counties will have different plans. But in Arlington, in 2023, there are 24 different prescription drug plans available. Um, they're available through nine different companies. Um, you do not need to pick the same plan as you have for your supplement. You could have Blue Cross for your supplement and Tufts for your um, Part, Part D plan. Um, or you can have um, AARP and um, WellCare. It does not matter. The two companies do, we, it's more important to find the one that fits your needs than to stick with a company. Um, the price range for the plans range from $6.80 per month to $126.60 per month. Um, the more expensive plans are going to have more beneficial coverage for higher cost medications in general. But this is something that's going to be very specific for what medications you're on. Um, and it's something that is a large part of what I do is I will um, go get a list of medications that one of my clients is on, run it through all the different plans, find out what plan is going to give them the best price for the year between the premium, the cost of the medications, everything, and help them sign up for that plan so that they have the um, best, um, most cost effective one for themselves. Um, you can do it yourself. Um, you can go to medicare.gov, find a plan. Um, you put in your medication information, the drug names, the strengths, how often you take it, what pharmacies you use, and it will come up with a um, comparison of all the different plans. You can break it down by company, by premium, by out-of-pocket expenses. So which plan is the best? It really does depend on which pharmacy you use and what medications you're on. Um, some plans have low premiums, but if you're paying a lot more for your medication, you're gonna be paying more out of pocket for the year than a plan that costs more each month, but has cheaper medications. Um, some are very specific about which pharmacy you use. So if you have one pharmacy that you love the pharmacist, um, you've been with them for years and you wanna stick with them, you wanna have a plan that covers that pharmacy. When to sign up for Medicare Part D. So for Medicare Part D, you have to be enrolled in Part A or Part B. You do not have to have both. So if you just have Part A and you need a prescription drug plan, you can pick that up. Um, the initial enrollment period is during the same time period that you sign up for your Medicare Part B. Um, and then the annual enrollment period is between October 15th and December 7th each year, which we're just starting now. Um, you can enroll or switch plans um, for coverage beginning January 1st of the next year. So if, this is, if you're just signing up for Medicare, um, you can enroll at the same time you're signing up for Part B. If you don't sign up during that time, 
You can only sign up for a prescription drug plan between October 15th and December 7th for coverage that begins on January 1st of the next year. Um, and then once you have a plan, each year you can change it to a different plan. So if your medications have changed, um, or even if they haven't changed, it's a good idea to go through the plans because sometimes each plan will change how much they cover a certain medication for the next year. And so it's good to check each year which plans are um, going to be the best for your current medications. But what if I don't take any medications? Why should I sign up for a plan? Um, you should still sign up for a plan if you're not taking medication because you may need medications later in the year and you won't be able to get them. And also there is a penalty for enrolling late. The late enrollment penalty for Part D is 1% of the national average per month you were eligible but not enrolled in a prescription drug plan. So for if you sign up 30 months after you become eligible for it, you would pay an additional 30% of the national average, which for 2023 is 3274 So you'd be paying an additional $9.80 per month for your plan when you pick it up for the rest of your life. Um, and that penalty does change each year based off of the national average. So if the national average goes up, you're going to be paying more penalty each year um, because of that percentage. Um, so like I said, there's a plan that's $6.80 per month. If you don't sign up and you sign up a few years later, you're going to be paying more than that in penalty. There are also some in special enrollment periods um, other than the annual enrollment period where you, can qual where you can sign up for a prescription drug plan. If you move out of the, the area that your current prescription drug plan is in, you can sign up in a new plan. Um, if you lose other credible coverage, for instance, if you um, lose your employer coverage, um, you can sign up for a prescription drug plan at that time. You don't have to wait for the open enrollment period. Um, if you live in a nursing home, you can change your prescription drug plan at any time. If you have MassHealth, um, if, you're on, if you're dual eligible, meaning you have both MassHealth and Medicare, then you um, qualify for a special enrollment period as well, and you can change prescription drug plans throughout the year. If you qualify for extra help, that's, um, there's, there's different state programs that you can qualify for um, that would reduce your premiums. Those also give you additional opportunities to change your prescription plan if you need to. And if you're in trying to switch to a plan that is a five-star plan, each year um, the different plan, all the plans get a star rating um, from Medicare. It's based off of um, um, surveys of the customers, of the um, providers, and um, they um, give a rating um, on a scale of one to five stars. If a plan has a five star rating, then you can enroll, you can change to that plan at any time. That's one of the benefits of getting that highest rating. Um, for Medicare Advantage, this is the other option. Supplements, as I said, are over $100, um, could be over $300 per month. So those can be pretty expensive. A Medicare Advantage plan is also offered through third-party companies. It's not offered through Medicare. It's offered by Blue Cross, offered by Tufts, offered by Harvard Pilgrim. Um, prices vary by company and by plan. You have to be enrolled in Part A and Part B, but what it does is instead of having the Medicare card that you bill first and then the supplement, it combines everything into the same sort of plan that most of us are used to through work, where everything is covered by one card. So it covers the um, doctor's office, covers your um, hospital stay, covers medications, all with the, just the one card that you would give to whoever. Um, most include prescription drugs. Um, not all of them do. So if you're signing up for a Medicare Advantage plan, um, you want to see if it's an MA plan or an MAPD plan. PD stands for prescription drugs. So if it's just an MA plan, it does not have drug coverage. Um, if you sign up for a Medicare Advantage plan that does not have drug coverage, you cannot sign up for an additional drug plan on top of it. You have to sign up for a prescription drug plan with the um, Medicare Advantage. 
Some people get be um, prescription benefits through like the VA. And in those cases, sometimes it does make sense for them to get the Medicare Advantage plan and keep their prescriptions through the VA, which is why they offer plans like that. Um, but for most people, getting a MAPD plan is going to be beneficial because again, that prescription drug plan penalty will apply if you don't have a plan that has a prescription drug coverage. In 2023 in Arlington, there are 38 um, MAPD plans and seven MA plans offered by nine companies. They range in premium for each month of no charge, no additional charge per month, to $258 per month. You're still gonna be paying your Part B premium, so it's not that you're not gonna be paying anything for your plan. Um, you'll still be paying that Part B premium of $164 per month, um, but you don't pay any additional money to the Part to the Medicare Advantage plan. Some Medicare Advantage plans do have network coverage, so you have to go to a doctor in network, just like with the commercial plans where you have an HMO and you have to go to a specific um, set of doctors. Medicare Advantage has that same restriction. Which plan is best? Again, it really depends on your need. Um, first thing you want to check is make sure the doctors you want to keep are on the plan. Um, you want to check the prescription coverage. Um, you want to check the um, costs for, for different procedures. If you know that um, you have a lot of specialists, you might want one that has a cheaper copay for specialists. Um, when to enroll? For Medicare Advantage, again, like the prescription drug plan, you, would, you can enroll in the same time as you enroll in your Part B. Um, or during the open annual enrollment period between October 15th and December 7th. Um, and that, again, each year you can pick a plan during that time to start January 1st or switch plans um, to start January 1st of the following year. I, also, there are special enrollment periods for these. If you move out of the plan service area, if you have mass health, if you qualify for extra help, um, live in a nursing home or another institution, or if the plan is a five-star plan, you can change to that plan at any time during the year. Disenrollment period. Medicare Advantage has a, um, something called a disenrollment period as well. If you just enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan sometime between October 15th and December 7th of this year and you get it started for January 1st, and this is the first time you're enrolled in it, you may decide, I really didn't want to do that. I want to just go back to playing Medicare. You're able to do that um, and switch to another Part C plan or to just get prescription drug plan and go back to regular Medicare. Um, or you can switch to another plan during the annual enrollment period for the at the next year. You can disenroll from January 1st to February 14th and go back to Medicare. If you disenroll, you would go back to Medicare and you can pick up a prescription drug plan at that point for the new year, but you cannot enroll in a different Medicare advantage plan. So here's the main comparison between those two different options, the su supplement Part D route or the Medicare Advantage route. Um, supplement and Part D, you can see any doctor that takes Medicare. There's no network. Um, you can go to any doctor in the country that takes Medicare. They will take your supplement as well. Um, I've had a lot of instances where I've gone to, uh, um, I've had clients call me and say, my doctor says they don't take this supplement. They do. Even if it's a plan that that doctor doesn't take, like there's a Fal Fallon plan, which is mostly in central Massachusetts, but if the, if the Fallon supplement, then your doctor takes it, even if they don't take the Fallon Medicare Advantage plan or the Fallon regular plans. Um, there's more flexibility with the prescription plans. You don't have to pick the um, prescription plan that's part of the Medicare Advantage plan, you can pick any plan that's available, even from a different company. And you can enroll in the supplement at any time during the year. Um, and it would start on the first day of the next month. Um, Medicare Advantage plans are usually cheaper than the supplements, as I said. Um, there's plans that have no additional charge per year versus $115 for the cheapest supplement. One card takes everything. You don't have to keep two, car two or three cards um, around to make sure that you have all your benefits. It's just one card, show it, you're done. 
may also include value added services. There are programs like Silver Sneakers um, that some Medicare Advantage plans have, which gives you discounts for um, gym memberships. Um, they also sometimes include vision coverage or hearing aid coverage that um, the Medicare does not cover that supplements may not cover. Low income assistance. Um, there are various um, sources that help pay um, if you need it for Medicare Part B premiums, Part A and B deductibles, co-pays and co-insurances, Part D premiums or Part D co-pays. Um, to see if you qualify for those, the best thing to do is contact the Social Security Administration. They can help you determine your eligibility. It's not something that I can do. Um, I can help you contact Social Security for it, but I can't say, yes, you qualify for this. It's something that Social Security is the one who would make the determination. Mass Health. If you, um, if you qualify for Mass Health as well, and there are different qualifications for Mass Health um, once you turn 65 than before 65. So if you qualify for Mass Health after you're 65 and after you have Medicare, you can, are called dual eligible. And you can sign up for different plans that are called Senior Care Option Plans, or SCOs. Um, again, most of the different companies have those, and you'd be able to sign up for those at any time during the year. Prescription Advantage is another state um, program that helps pay um, prescription costs. So if you're having trouble paying for your prescriptions, you can contact Prescription Advantage um, and see if um, they can help you with your medication costs. There's also medication coupons and programs for the different medications. Um, you'd want to go to the company websites. Not all of them work with Medicare, so you want to make sure that if it is one that you make sure that they know that you're on Medicare so they can tell you, yes, my, this um, discount plan works with Medicare or not. Um, there are, here are some important phone numbers. Um, 1-800-AGE-INFO is the Massachusetts Executive Office of Elder Affairs. Um, they have Elder Service Agency. Prescription Advantage is option two on there. The SHINE program is a great program. Um, they can also help you, um, dis they can give you option or they can run some of the figures for you and give you options. They cannot help you sign up for um, Medicare plans which is the, one of the main differences between what they do and what I do, is I can actually help you enroll in the plan. They can just say, here's your information, and then you have to actually go and do it. Um, option four, if you have, need to report anything. Option five, for all other matters for the Elder Affairs Services. Mass Health phone number, senior care options. As I said, the, if you qualify for both Medicare and Medicaid, um, you can call that number and see what, if there's a senior care option plan that works well for you. Um, Medicare Advocacy Project offers free legal advice and representation. Um, Mass College of Pharmacy and Health Services has an outreach program um, that will help with um, prescription drug information and referrals. And then I've listed the Social Security phone number once again um, because that is the most important number when you're trying to sign up for Medicare. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. I have a, a question about uh, enrollment, eligibility and enrollment. First of all, mm -hmm. um, first of all, thank you. That's all the information. What are uh, Medicare credits? So a credit for Medicare Part A is one quarter of paying Medicare taxes. So if you've worked for 10 years, and you've paid Medicare um, taxes through your um, payroll for 10 years, um, that is the 40 credits. Each quarter of a year is one credit. You have up to three months after your, um, the month of your birthday to sign up for the Part B and a prescription drug plan or a Medicare Advantage plan or anything because this, is your this would be your initial enrollment period. So it's that three months before your birthday month, your birthday month, and the three months after. Part A, um, you would, if you're collecting Social Security, um, you would. Okay. So then um, that's the same thing. If you're employed, that's a, another thing on top of that.
because for that you can um, sign up for Part A and Part B anytime while you're employed or for up to eight months after the employee, after you've dropped the coverage from your employer. Employment. Except that I heard, tell me if this is true or not, that if my employer has fewer than 50 employees or so many employees, I must sign up? It depends on the plan and how your company is set up. You would want to talk to the HR department um, or the, um, pr the medical benefits for that to see if they um, will because in some cases, if you have under 20 employees is what it usually is. There's, there's under 20, there's 20 to 50, and there's, 50, and there's 100 and, or that, 20 to 100 and 100 and more are the three categories. If it's under 20, then they don't have to cover you, so you would want to sign up for Medicare um, because that you would be being dropped from their coverage from turning 65. Okay, so let's say I want to sign up for A and B. Mm -hmm. and my birthday falls you know, in, in early December. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do I still, and I'm still employed, do I still have eight months, do I have to still sign up now to have it start, I guess because I have to, if I want it to start January 1st, I have to start, sign up before December 7th. Right, if you want to start January 1st, you would need to sign up before, before the end of December. You can sign up December 31st because of your eligibility oh, case. Um, you can sign up till December 31st because that's your birthday month okay. um, and you're just turning 65. Right. Um, so, you have, so you don't have to worry about that annual enrollment period this year. Next year, if you wanted to switch plans, you'd have to worry about the October 15th to December 7th window. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, can you uh, explain how the, um, if I, say, um, signed up for a Medicare Advantage plan, mm -hmm. stayed in three years and then wanted to disenroll mm -hmm. and go into conventional Medicare, mm -hmm. how does that work with the late sign-up penalty? Am I going to be assessed those? No, because to have a Medicare Advantage plan, you have to be enrolled in Part B. What about the prescription drug coverage? If the Medicare Advantage plan has a prescription drug coverage, if it's an MAPD plan, then you have a prescription drug plan, and so there won't be a penalty. If it's just a Medicare Advantage plan without prescription coverage, then you will be in, um, assigned that penalty for not having the prescription drug coverage. So all Medicare Advantage plans are considered to include Part B? Um, yes, because you have to have Part B to qualify, to have, to get a Medicare Advantage plan. Mm -hmm. Yes? If you start um, Social Security and then you're in Part A and Part B, mm -hmm. do the uh, payments for Part B make it straight out of your Social Security? Yes. Um, they will automatically come out of your Social Security check for the Part B um, premiums. Um, if you do not collect Social Security and you're signed up for Part B, what they'll do is they'll um, bill you for three months at a time. So they'll bill you quarterly for the insurance. So Ben, you were saying that for Supplement A, 1A, mm -hmm. for those who are eligible after January 1st, 2020, you're talking about your birth year. So if you're born in 1952, then you're before that. Correct. Um, okay. And it's based off of eligibility year, not year that you signed up for it. So if you're eligible, um, as of January 1st, 2020, but you delayed it for a few years, you could still sign up for a Supplement 1 plan. It does not have to be a 1A plan. Yes? When you talked about um, typical premiums for the Medicare Advantage plan, mm -hmm. or the supplement, do those depend on age? No. Yep. In Massachusetts, they do not. Um, again, that's something that um, other states, um, if you live in New Hampshire, they do have age ranges. Other states will have things like that. Massachusetts, it's a standardized premium for each plan. I have a question. Um, full disclosure, I work for Tufts Health Plan um, before it became Point Surgical Health. And yes, I know it's a, it's a dumb name. So, um, but the only plan in Massachusetts that has five stars is Tufts Health Plan. Currently, yes. And so that's the only plan that we in Massachusetts it's done by state, right? So I can't go sign up for a five-star plan in another state. Correct, because you wouldn't be in the network for that plan. Um, it's the only one. Even Harvard Pilgrim doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you're um, a fully employed, mm -hmm. when you're reaching your retirement age, mm -hmm. um, do you have to fill in anything and you're, you're covered by your employer's plan? Mm -hmm. Do you still have to go on and say somewhere that you're covered and so that at the, t at the time um, now, you do not need to do anything. 
um, it, when you do sign up for part um, A and part B eventually, or part B eventually, because as I said, you can still sign up for part A now if you qualify from the uh, 10 years of paying Medicare taxes to 40 quarters. Um, but when you go to sign up for part B, they will probably send you a letter. Usually they'll send you a letter saying, please send us verification that you've had credible insurance for this period of time. And then you would send that to your HR department. They would send that information on to um, Medicare. Um, it's standard. Most HR departments do it all the time, so they'll know exactly what they're doing. So when you say that, um, sorry, it's all very new to me. Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. And do you have to do that if you're an employee? You do not have to sign up for Part A. What are the advantages or what are the benefits? Um, the benefits is you'll have, um, the Part A is for hospital coverage. So normally with your benefits from your employer, you will have a uh, um, cost for your um, hospital stay. Um, the, Part A, the Medicare Part A plan would work with that and it can possibly reduce your um, your out-of-pocket costs and if you have the 40 quarters then you're not going to be paying anything for it so you're getting additional benefits at no additional cost. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So during open enrollment if I, if I do 10 years of open enrollment every open enrollment I can change the Medicare Advantage plan to go with the one that's best for me? Yes every every year you have that option. If you, ch you can change plans during that open enrollment period or between December or January 1st and February 14th, you can disenroll from the Medicare Advantage plan, although that's only the first year that you're signed up for it. So, so, so would, if you, if I do 10 years of Medicare Advantage, you don't have that disenrollment I period. Go back to just doing Medicare. I have to stay with Medicare Advantage forever? No. During your um, open enrollment period from October 15th to December 7th, the best way of doing that, if you want to switch, is to pick up a prescription drug plan. By picking up a prescription drug plan, you'll automatically be unenrolled from that Medicare Advantage plan with the prescription drug because you can only have one prescription drug plan at a time. And you want to make sure that the Medicare Advantage plan you have does have a prescription drug plan for it. Yes, unless you're in one of the few circumstances where you're getting prescription coverage elsewhere and you're um, well, not going to need okay. prescription plan. Mm -hmm. um, and it would probably be the 1A. Um, what's not covered besides the deductible? What are the other holes that are left? None. None. Okay. Yes. I have a question. What is Unicorn Consulting? And if somebody had, are you available to consult with individuals that might have a complicated situation? And how are you, <laughs> what is the cost or how are you compensated? So, Unicorn Consulting is um, my company. Um, I am the owner. Um, and it's, um, both Medicare and um, also um, group and individual health care. It's also financial advising um, and such. Each of the different areas have different structures. As far as this goes with, the, with Medicare Advantage or prescription drug plans or supplements, there is no cost to anyone here for it. Um, if I enroll you in a plan, the insurance company will pay me a commission for signing you up with their plan. Um, but there is no um, charge to anyone to, to use my services. On the first page is my phone number and my email address. You can contact me at any time. I am happy to help out with any issues, no matter how complicated. And as I said, for anything Medicare related, there is no charge to any of you. Do you have a website? Um, I do. It's unicartonconsulting.us. Um, I need to update it more than I do, um, but I do have a website. Um, it's really pretty much the same as um, your current networks, although some um, doctor's offices cover, will cover a commercial plan, um, but not the um, Medicare version of it. Like I know um, some doctor's offices will cover Harvard Pilgrim for commercial members, do not cover the Harvard Pilgrim HMO, so you do want to check um, to make sure that it's the same. Um, or that your doctors take that um, coverage, but it 
doesn't tend to be much more restrictive. Um, so does that, so to follow on to that question, so each Medicare Advantage plan that you're thinking about, they have to disclose who they, who's in their network and who's out of their network. You can ask them that, right? Right, and um, it's a variety of things. You, the insurance company's website is usually the most up-to-date. Um, you can also contact your um, doctor and ask them. They will usually know. Um, sometimes they do get confused. Um, so, because, uh, again, because like we can take Harvard Pilgrim, but not the uh, Medicare Harvard Pilgrim. So, it's, it's best, the best place is usually the insurance company website. They will have the provider networks that they have. Um, but the, the providers also usually know, or the, not necessarily the providers, but the staff at the office know which plans they are accepting. Yes? Are you allowed to sign up for a supplement 1 or 1A in lieu of a Medicare Advantage plan? Yes. You're, you can only sign up for a supplement or a Medicare Advantage plan. You cannot sign up for both. And a 1 or one, a 1A one is about $226 per month? Um, the, correct. The, the, at the top, I put down the price range of the premiums for that plan. Um, and then there's the $226 premium um, Part B deductible that you're due for the year as well. Um, but there's, you said there's no deductible for 1A? 1A has a Part B deductible, but it does cover the Part A deductible. Oh, right. um, mm -hmm. If you are self-employed, then uh, mm -hmm. does those uh, under Obama care if you're buying insurance? Mm -hmm. Those companies offer you Medicare or they don't offer? Um, so if you're getting um, self-employment insurance through um, directly through a company, um, it that would be a more complicated situation. It, there's really a lot that would depend on it, um, depending on like the size of the company and things like that. Um, but in general, probably be in the best interest to sign up for Medicare and. The, um, secondary, uh, either Medicare Advantage or a supplement to go with it and um, not do the self-employment. Again, it's going to be very much an uh, individual situation. Though. Excuse me. Yes. I didn't ask everybody again. The gentleman took the question over there about the 1A mm -hmm. uh, covering the Part A deductible. Yes. Which deductible? The $1,600? The $1,600 deductible. Um, the, the core plan does not cover that $1,600 deductible. The 1A one or one a plan does cover the $1,600 deductible. Um, the 1 covers the Part B deductible, but the 1A does not cover the Part B deductible. Yes. So Part A is free if you meet the qualifications? Correct. Um, because you've been paying, that's what you've been paying your payroll taxes for this entire time. Um, that's the one that the government keeps complaining is going to go insolvent. Um, but um, that you've already paid, you've already paid those premiums your entire working career. And out of all the parts, which ones are tied to states? In other words, if I move out of state, what's impacted by that? So, um, med if you move out of state, you can keep your Medicare supplement, or you can switch to a Medicare supplement in the new state. Your Medicare Advantage plan or your prescription drug plan is tied to. Um, Really, your county. Um, so, if you change, if you move counties, um, you, then you're going to get um, different prescription drug plans and different Medicare Advantage plans that you might qualify for. Do you have to change them, or do you keep? Do you have to live in the state where you're getting it, where you're enrolled, or? Yes, because what will happen is if you um, move out of state, um, then you and you contact Medicare to let them know that you moved, so that you get all of your benefits to the new place. They will contact Medicare Advantage to let them know as well, and because you're not in their net, not in their region anymore, you will be automatically um, disenrolled from it. But you get that automatic opportunity to enroll in the new plan. What was the other one besides Medicare Advantage? The prescription drug plan. Okay. On Part B prescription, how does the donor uh, impact in terms of when you pay and when you don't pay for the? The and, and, and the okay. Ben, could you repeat the question, please? Yep, sorry. Um, so um, that question was about the um, donor hole and the different parts of the prescription drug plans. Um, 
So um, I don't have those numbers with me right now. Um, the way it works, there's several different parts to a prescription drug plan. Um, the first part is usually there's a deductible um, that you're responsible for before the prescription plan kicks in. Then they'll um, start their amount and you pay co-pays up to about $4,500, at which point um, you reach what's called the donut hole where the insurance company reduces the amount that they pay. Um, it hasn't been, it's not that they don't pay anything anymore like it used to be, they do pay a percentage, but or your, your prices are reduced by a percentage uh, up to about $7,500 out of your pocket, at which point you reach catastrophic coverage and then it goes down to about um, five to ten dollars per prescription um, from then on for the rest of the for the rest of the year, and that starts over again on January first of the next year. So each year, each, each year, um, your the different periods start over again. There's a question back here. Yes. This is probably so, maybe some maybe not. During open enrollment, see if you have a supplemental, you can change to uh, an advantage plan. Or yes, yes. Um, but you would want to contact the supplement and let them know that you are to give them that care advantage plan and unenroll from the supplement. Thank you. Ben, do you find that many people are going with the Medicare Advantage plans? Um, yes, again, it really depends on their needs. Okay. Um, what I find in general is people that are a little bit um, more prone to being in the hospital will pick a supplement plan um, especially a supplement one or one A plan um, because um, that will cover the part A um, pre part A um, deductible for the hospital stay and that will be more beneficial over and a little bit cheaper for them over the time. Um, but it really depends on how much people are paying each month and how likely they think they are to use a lot of benefits. Or some people just want to have just the extra protection and then they'll go with the supplement as well. See, the advantage covers things like physiotherapy, which supplements one or a one a wouldn't cover. Is that right? Some of those type of benefits? Um, Could you repeat yeah. the question? Um, so, Mick, you're, you were asking if Medicare Part A has additional um, benefits that the supplement might not. Um, it does depend again on the supplement and the prescription and the Medicare Advantage plan. Medicare Advantage plans are more likely to have things like the um, silver sneakers um, or cover some acupuncture. Supplements in general just have to cover whatever Medicare covers. So if Medicare doesn't cover acupuncture, the supplement doesn't have to cover that either because it's only being a secondary to the Medicare plan. Some of the plans do choose to have additional benefits, like some have some hearing coverage, vision coverage, and such. But again, that's not required. And Medicare Advantage plans, I found, tend to be a little bit more likely to have those benefits. Thank you very much, Ben. Really Thank you. very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.